It looks like we finally have a winner in the Hungary vs European Union face-off. And it is Hungary. Brussels' strategy to oppose the Viktor Orban-led country on ideological grounds, citing quote-unquote democratic backsliding, has failed. The heated confrontation between Budapest and Brussels has been going on for a few months, with neither side refusing to step back. For months, the EU had frozen aid funding to Hungary, citing concerns around the rule of law and government corruption. Orban hit back, vetoing the European Union's 18 billion euro aid package for Ukraine and a minimum global corporate tax rate. A deadlock took shape. Until this week, now, the EU has fallen from its moral grandstanding and has been reduced to carrying out a mere trade-off proving just how weak it is in the face of rising European disunity. So what are the terms and conditions of this trade-off? How is this a win for Viktor Orban? And what does Orban's victory over the EU tell us about the bloc? Hello and welcome. This is your host Shubhangi Sharma and you're watching First Post. The European Union on Monday finally gave in to pressure from Hungary, lowering the amount of a proposed funding freeze in exchange for Budapest's support to the aid package to Ukraine. What was at stake here, though? You see, the European Union had earlier earmarked around 7.5 billion euros of EU funds for Hungary, as well as a 5.8 billion euro COVID-19 recovery plan. For context, the combined EU funds are worth more than 8% of Hungary's 2022 GDP. In fact, if this deal, which had been in the works for weeks, hadn't been cracked, Hungary would have irrevocably lost 70% of the total aid thanks to the EU's approach. EU governments have now agreed to partially reduce the funds frozen from 7.5 billion euros to 6.3 billion in exchange for Hungary's support to EU's Ukraine aid. The 6.3 billion euros amounts to 55% of EU cash that Hungary is due to receive until 2027 from the EU budget to reduce differences in living standards with richer members of the 27-nation bloc. The bloc wanted to earlier freeze 65% of the money. This tussle is among the many that Viktor Orban has had with the EU in his 12-year tenure so far. In this case, Orban was in serious need of funds as inflation crept up to 26% and state debt was piling up. Then the EU promised that it would bail out Hungary only to go back on that promise. It found an excuse in corruption and the claim that Hungary's democracy was backsliding under Orban to stall the aid. As part of the deal, the bloc also told Budapest that it must complete 27 anti-corruption and judicial independence reforms before getting its money. Hungary claimed that it had already completed around 16 of them, but Brussels refused to take Hungary's word. The pressure escalated when France and Germany led a 12-nation bloc backing Orban. They made it very clear to the bloc that Hungary was indeed working on these conditions and that it would soon fulfill all of them. Eventually, it was this surprising bout of support for Hungary which built pressure on the EU. Withholding these funds also invited unaffordable trouble for the EU because there's European unity to look after. It was only after this that Orban upped his rhetoric of not backing the bloc's aid to Ukraine. And that did clear damage to the facade of European unity. This is what Paola Tama from the Politico observes about the breakthrough, this change of heart in Brussels. I quote, The outcome amounts to a win for Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban who has spent months gambling that he could use vetoes to wrangle EU funds from Brussels. You see, there were two key factors that played a role in Orban's win. An EU system that requires unanimity on many major decisions and an intense EU desire to showcase European unity as the war in Ukraine continues nearby. For the bloc, there was nothing it could have done. 
Hungary's veto was a major obstacle to the bloc's Ukraine aid. And there is more to why Hungary and the EU do not get along. Ideologically, the Viktor Orban leadership is a polar opposite of the EU in many ways. Orban's stand on immigration, his conservative policies, his overall nationalism and most recently his approach towards Russia have become a thorn in the ties with the EU that wants to rein in leaders that disagree so sharply. The EU is still withholding billions of euros from Hungary which the country should be receiving by 2027. Yet this is a big win for Viktor Orban, who has secured a trade-off by checkmating the EU's high-handed approach. It reveals the EU's tendency to arm twist nations to its liking, and yet its limitations doing the same. It shows that sustained resistance by countries can make the EU step back. As the standoff with Hungary shows, the 27-member bloc is filled with disagreements and is well short of being the perfect union it prides itself as. What do you think of Orban's win and rising European disunity? Do let us know in the comments.